this show got me invested in Marvel as a whole, um, and I greatly appreciate it for that reason. For me and my brother growing up, we used to sit down and watch that show, and we had really no idea what we were getting into or what it even was about, but we were like, hey, superheroes are cool. And that established like our love for Marvel throughout the whole rest of our lives. That was our comic books. We never had access to a store, so that was really like what we had to grow up on, is that show, and that's why it means so much to me. When 74 of the world's worst supervillains are on the loose, Marvel, the Avengers, Earth's mightiest heroes found themselves united against a common threat. On that day... Hey people, I regret to inform you that Avengers, Earth's mightiest heroes has been cancelled, or more officially, has officially not been renewed for a third season. It seems like people really do like this show. From what I uh, gather from the uh, responses that people are leaving, the comments, this kind of stuff, this is a uh, fan favorite show. Um, you know, we wait... It's a load of crap that they have canceled this show after two seasons. Once again, once again, another show, another good show is canceled. Oh man, I feel like such a loser. Look at my wallet. It sucks. Holy shit, I'm cool now. Hell yeah! This was me when I got my Ridge Wallet. This video is sponsored by the Ridge, by the way, clearly. The Ridge Wallet is light, sleek, and industrial. It doesn't fold or bulge in your pockets. It's super slim, just how I like it. But even though it's nice and compact, the Ridge Wallet can hold up to 12 cards, including cash. It's made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers, and there's a bunch of different styles to choose from. In fact, the Ridge team is so confident that you'll love the wallet that you can try it for 45 days, and if you don't like it, you can return it. And if you don't trust me, trust the over 30,000 five-star reviews, and the Ridge offers more than just wallets, they have backpacks, space pens, yeah, space pens. So make sure to go to ridge.com slash browntable and use code browntable to get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns. That's right, it's ridge.com slash browntable and use the code browntable, or just go to the link in the description. A fun fact about me. I missed out on Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes when I was growing up. I think I only ever watched two episodes, and this was years after the show had been cancelled. But during that time, the late 2000s, early 2010s, thankfully I was able to watch shows like The Spectacular Spider-Man and somehow even Wolverine and the X-Men sometimes. My memory's kind of foggy on those years, but all I know is that the 2000s and early 2010s were a great time to be a superhero show fan. But sadly, I never really got to watch a good amount of Avengers to get invested in the show. So out of the blue, after such a long time, 10 years, I decided to watch it. And watch it, I did. Talk to me, Jarvis. Disney Plus, while lacking in content I'm interested in, is definitely handy for old Marvel and Disney shows and movies. And the show was in there, and right from the get-go, it blew my mind. See, the show has five micro-episodes that all showcase the individual members of the Avengers. But when the show actually aired on television, it only aired the Iron Man episode. A few days later, going straight to the two-parter episode where the Avengers are formed. So you're thinking, wait, why didn't they air all five micro-episodes before reaching the Avengers forming? That's what the MCU did, right? But the magic of the show is that they don't need to do that. It makes you care about the characters you're following in no time at all and their different personalities clashing makes the entire two-parter episode shine like no tomorrow. It's so well written and executed, in fact, that it's easily some of the best episodes of the series. Would some build-up have been cool? Sure, but it's not like there's a formula. Guardians of the Galaxy is a team-oriented film, and we didn't need a Rocket and Groot solo movie to understand the characters, right? In fact, its time-hopping narrative increases the intrigue of the story. Hey, wait, I'm- Avengers, Earth, Mightiest Heroes, not only introduced me to a catalog of Marvel superheroes, but it did so in a way that treated them as actual characters. We got to learn more about them, we got to learn to love them, and we got to learn what made them great characters. It's a lot of different worlds colliding, and that's where, you know, some of the, the great character interactions come from. You're helping me. Yeah, now hit him! 
One of the show's strengths is how it's able to make you understand these characters' backstories by, well, actually showing their pasts, but also through character interactions. Again, we have these flashback episodes that focus individually on these superheroes, but in the present, we get all these fun dynamics. We have Tony and Cap debating the importance, or better yet, over-reliance on technology. My armor protects me, you know. You can't always count on your armor. You have to be ready for anything. We have Hank and Janet low-key in love with each other, but Hank screws it up. And Hank is an amazing character in the series, by the way, and these two are so cool, you start to realize why people were mad that Scott Lang was the Ant-Man in the MCU and not Hank Pym. Because Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne have such a rich backstory, and the MCU just kind of glossed over it. And that's kind of a bummer, man. He has a real fundamental problem with, with violence. You're Ant-Man! I'm not, Jan. I haven't been since Ultron. Looks like I'm tougher than all of you. Don't even, Clint! I mean it. We also have Hulk and Hawkeye's surprising dynamic, which is such a blast to watch. Uh, I'll stay if Cupid stays. He's basically Hulk all the time, so now he really does think, and has a more of a consciousness and can speak in complete sentences. <sighs> Sorry, I guess this is a bit over your head. It's a form of cosmic radiation. You don't know what this is. Or... Yes, nuclear fusion, I do know. Yeah, you know, little things that he, he, he knows, but he's kind of denied Banner, really. He still just is his own thing. The show feels like a perpetual Avengers Age of Ultron lifting Thor's hammer scene, because as episodes go on, we see how this team learns to trust each other and how they end up becoming the world's greatest heroes. In the movies, they would come together every few years to save the world, and then they would just kind of leave. It gave that human connection that I felt was lacking in the movies. Much like Spectacular Spider-Man before it, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes was a cartoon that I super appreciated for its amazing art style, great character writing. They really put their all into it, and I'm sad that we only got two seasons. Now, Black Panther's introduction to the show is at the butt end of an episode about Ant-Man and the Wasp. It completely comes out of left field, but it is so good. I feel like it's legitimately as good as the movie. It has this confrontation about whether tradition should be changed or ignored, about whether it's okay to accept new authority if the authority is tyrannical in nature. Black Panther is easily one of the best characters in the show, and I adore how they made him so intelligent. I teleported the Kree Sentry into the sun. Thank you for distracting it while I learned the ship's systems. And he has a great dynamic with Captain America, both honorable, dutiful men. Speaking of Captain America, his intro episode? Oof! Boy, oh boy, Chef Boyardi. It is unreal. By the way, I wish Bucky died this way in the movies. It's so much better than falling out of a train, out of nowhere. I feel like the movies kind of wanted this shock moment of like, anyone could die at any time, it's war, but it just came out really half-assed. Here, it actually feels like a tragedy. Bucky wants to prove himself to Captain America, but Captain America knows that it's just a kid with like, no powers. And Bucky utterly fails at proving himself and sacrifices his life to make sure Captain America in some way survives. Sorry, but the world needs Captain America more than Bucky! <clears throat> Just brilliant. While the show has like two seasons, I feel like the show's art direction pretty much climaxes at this episode, because it is so beautiful to look at. It is so unique and so dynamic. It feels so poppy, it's like a comic book leaping from the page. The show's art direction accentuates how ridiculous the concept of superheroes is, and interprets it in a way that both looks as crazy as it does in the comics, but also helps the characters blend into their world effortlessly. One thing I feel needs to be said is Black Widow. I've always loved how she's had stories where she's a double agent, and you don't know if you should trust her and stuff. And this show has that. Black Widow's a double agent, she's working for Hydra. Or is she? But as soon as you find out the truth, the show hits you with another bombshell. Wait, Madame Hydra is a scroll? Best Secret Wars adaptation ever. Nothing comes close. Mwah. The show pulls from so many comic book stories, it's amazing. The Secret Invasion storyline in particular being one I absolutely adore. 
Like, the show has a big Kang arc, inspired by Avengers number 8. It has an Ultron arc pretty much immediately after it too, and in season 2 there's another Ultron appearance with the Vision, inspired by Avengers number 66, and so forth, you get what I mean. And the transition from arc to arc is so smooth. There, every episode was enjoyable, but also there were like, overarching story arcs between both seasons. The show's stories are so massive and world-ending, that every time an arc ends, it feels like a season finale. That being said, some episodes feel like they end too quickly. And I think the show could have maybe removed one or two episodes and allowed certain other episodes to expand their stories a bit more so the plot and characters had more time to breathe. One of the more important things the show doesn't have too much is characters having moments to themselves. Moments where we see how their lives are affecting how they feel about themselves. There's moments like that scattered throughout the story, but they aren't as effective as, say, the spectacular Spider-Man storytelling, I feel. A good example of this would be the Hulk. In general, the Hulk is great, but I love the scenes with Banner. Especially the scenes where Hulk is talking to Banner and Banner is just a figure in his mind. No one else can see him, and the show does such a good job at showing the dynamic between these two characters that inhabit the same body. Originally, it's really about Banner. He's his own weapon, and his own worst enemy, and there's not much that he has to say. Really, his big MO is he wants to be left alone, and that's true all the way through. That's Hulk's thing, and when Hulk fuses with Banner, it's sort of a, a reluctant agreement. Uh, well, Hulk wants that, but Banner has to do it. He just feels it's, it's the best way. If I do this, I stay. I stay the Hulk, not Banner. But yeah, even though these moments are scarce, the show makes up for it by dishing out awesome stories and building them up with such ease, it's awesome. Dare I say it? They did a mighty good job. <laughs> like and subscribe. Now back to Secret Invasion because I love that shit, the main reason it works is because it's a slow burn. It doesn't just happen and you're like, oh, the scrolls were always here and now they're invading. The invasion happens in season two and little hints are dropped throughout season one. I can't trust any of you. And if we can't trust each other, we can't fight anything. The biggest cliffhanger ever is just having Captain America be captured by a scroll and being replaced by him. And throughout half of the second season, it's just scroll cap on the team. Like literally, that's not Captain America. And he stays on the show for a really long time, while the real Steve is captured on board a scroll ship. Captain America is honestly my favorite character in the series, and having him escape with Madame. <clears throat> Madame Hydra, oh, on God show? Avengers are smittiest heroes, please! I can only simp so hard! <laughs> There's another amazing episode which is super popular because Spider-Man's in it, and it's about Captain America and Spider-Man being stuck underground. And at this time, everyone hates Captain America because plot. And Captain America just is okay with being shit on by civilians? And Spider-Man's like, man, how are you just taking this, you know? And Cap legitimately goes, well, you're a hero and you take it. I know of you. And how you strive to be a better person despite people shitting on you is commendable. I'm going to keep fighting, just like you do. Can I be your sidekick? No, you're not. <laughs> I really wish Josh Keaton voiced Spider-Man here, dear god, and honestly in my headcanon, this is the spectacular Spider-Man Spider-Man. This reminds me of the comic The Amazing Spider-Man number 578 and 579, Unscheduled Stop. And the plot is basically the same thing, Spider-Man is stuck underground with people and he has to get them out. It's genuinely brilliant, I highly recommend you read it. The show very clearly appreciates its comic book roots as goofy and ridiculous as they are and just bathes in that shit. It embraces, it doubles down on the goofiness. And thankfully, as this is a cartoon and the creators are so in love with the source material, they go full throttle. And it really does feel like an alternate version of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, complete with side characters popping in and out, Spider-Man, Wolverine. I was legitimately shocked when the Fantastic Four appeared, as well as Iron Fist and Luke Cage, heroes for hire. And it never feels weird or off. Like, would I like these characters to have more development? Yeah. Does the show sometimes throw stuff at you and expect you to understand? Yeah, but does it hurt the story in any way? Somehow, no. The show just throws shit at you, and it's nuts, but that's also awesome? Kang's not invincible. The Avengers have taken him down before, and you want to know how? They did it as a team. I have no idea how they mastered this, but they really did with this show. It's just so much fun. It really is so much fun.
I got to see the characters that I love so much and the characters that I followed through the comics live on screen. And for those characters that I hadn't experienced yet, it gave me an amazing jumping off point to fall in love with these characters. It gave me a reason to fall in love with these characters. The amount of reverence for the material that's on display, you can feel how much everyone working on this show loves Marvel and loves getting the chance to work with these characters and with this universe. And I think what makes the show work so well in its favor is that it's not trying to be the MCU. The show is more interested in taking stories from the comics where everything originated and playing off that. And it's an absolute disappointment that a show of this caliber was cancelled in favor of Avengers Assemble. And honestly, yeah, I get it. They want to capitalize off the success of the Avengers movies. But damn, at least make it worth it. Avengers Assemble? Mid. Ultimate Spider-Man? Mid. Hulk Agents of Smash? Yeah, that's a show, I bet you forgot it existed. Guardians of the Ga- you, you, you get my point. So what can I say, Marvel Animation's decision to bank on the billion dollar Avengers movie led to an angry fanbase, mediocre shows with lackluster direction, and a disappointing decade for Marvel Animation. I want to get into all that in another video, but anyways, the vision Christopher Yost and the countless others that worked on the show had was destroyed. But thankfully, their work still lives on in the hearts of those that watched and appreciated this show. Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, wasn't something I was able to experience in real time, but I'm just so happy that others were able to. So I thank you for sending me your videos, because seeing people exclaim their love for a work of art is always something extremely surreal. Hands down, the best thing about Earth's Mightiest Heroes is that even though it's a cartoon geared towards children, the creators didn't hold back. They weren't afraid to tell those more mature stories. It's given me like so much of what I'm a fan of. Like it was my first introduction to not only most of these characters, but the concept of the Avengers. And as you can see, Avengers Endgame is now my favorite movie of all time. Avengers vs. Mightiest Heroes changed my life. It got me into superhero stories and Marvel and DC and everything in that realm. Um, and it wasn't really until I saw Avengers Endgame that I realized how much those characters meant to me because I grew up with them. That's like my early, some of my earliest memories from childhood. It helped me discover comics and other superhero things such as DC and Marvel. So I am a big fan of all things Marvel. I've become a huge collector and I would say that that is largely in part due to Earth's Mightiest Heroes. It was definitely my first big introduction to the Marvel Universe, and I think my life has been completely changed for the better because of Earth's Mightiest Heroes. It also set up my love for Carol Danvers, so there's also that. I cannot express my gratitude enough to every talented soul who made everything happen. Art style and the animation, it's beautiful. It really lets all the characters' personalities come to life through the art style and the animation is very clean. The writing is super good, does not make the audience feel stupid and tackles so much. Flashback to about when I was nine years old and the Avengers movie was coming out next year and I really wanted to see it, but I was terrified of the Incredible Hulk. So I watched the show, the cartoon, as a way of getting myself used to him as a character and I ended up loving the uh, first Avengers movie just as pretty much anyone else did as a result of that. I love Ask My Tears Heroes. So I was there every single day at 5.30 to watch it uh, and I was really mad at my parents when I, whenever I missed an episode. I think the series is a perfect example of having all your action figures and telling a unique story because it grabs a lot of stories and a lot of characters from Marvel's history and gives them the proper development, the proper treatment that they deserve. I love this show and I love that uh, intro. Oh my god, the intro. When they're brought together to fight certain threats. It was a way of teaching me how people could work together to create a team and change the world. To have a show that shows that they're all friends and that they actually all eat together it's just really special and I think it should be celebrated and talked about way more than it actually is. This show made Captain America my favorite superhero of all time. It's completely 
filled with life. Making a fun story that's an homage to 1670s of comics. When I think Iron Man, I think Eric Loomis. I think Captain America, I think Brian Bloom. Like, the creators and people who made the show actually cared about it, where like, the characters would have all the costumes and storylines were like, ripped straight from the comics. And those Black Panther daggers are awesome. I mean, Captain America makes you want to be a hero. The memories this show gave me will last me all my life. Perfect Saturday morning cartoon, great animation, marvelous intro song. Black Panther, Spider-Man, Iron Fist, they just meant so much to me. I have volumes one and two on DVD. This show was my childhood. When I was a kid, I couldn't watch all the MCU movies because they would scare me. I would watch Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and it was great. Go watch Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. It's hard to describe why you loved something as a kid. I'm going to be an adult for the first time, and I still can't quite describe what it's like to love something as a kid. Earth's Mightiest Heroes was that. It was the only non-Spider-Man show that I avidly grew up with. I watched the entire show start to finish, and I was waiting for season three. And I remember when it got cancelled. It's my favorite show still to this day that isn't Spider-Man. And I'm extremely grateful that I got to be one of the lucky kids in the world who grew up with that show. It's really amazing. I'm actually working on an animated series, Interstellar Ranger Commence, and it would mean the world to me if you would check it out, link in the description. And thanks so much Blaz, or, or Blaze, for this awesome fan art of Hope Griffin from the series. Her pose is really dynamic, it looks absolutely brilliant. Thanks so much to everyone who submitted a video, all of you made this happen, and you too, viewer, helped make this video pop too. I, I think, I hope, please remember to comment and share the video wherever you go. Reddit would be awesome. And also, if you want to become part of the Chad Nation, that's what I call my subscribers, all you gotta do is subscribe and turn on all notifications. And if you do that, you'll officially become an Avenger. That is not a joke, I am actually Tony Stark, and that's my best Tony Stark impression. <laughs> Thank you so much, patrons, for your continued support. This video would definitely be a lot tougher to consider if I didn't have your support to back me up. So thanks so much for coming to the table, and I'll see you all next time.